we'll get started now. So, hello everyone and thank you for joining us today. My name is Sarah and I'm a marketing executive for the University of Liverpool Online Programmes. I am here to give a brief overview before passing on to our speakers. Just to remind you, this session will be recorded and we will email the recording to all of you after this, so do keep an eye out for that. Okay, if we can go to the next slide, please. So, our speakers today are Dr. Lisa Day, Director of Studies for the Online MBA, and Ruth Litre from Admissions, all here to provide information on each section and answer your questions. Great, next slide, please. So in this section, Lisa will introduce the online part-time Master of Business Administration program, module structure, learning materials and assessment. And Ruth will then go on to explain the admissions and enrollment process. We also have time for questions at the end of the session. So do feel free to drop them into the chat or the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen uh, as we go and we will review and pick these up at the end. We will try to answer as many as we can. Okay, if we can go to the next slide, please. And the University of Liverpool is proud to be known as the original Red Brick University. It was founded in 1881 um, and is a member of the Russell Group, uh, a group of 24 research-led UK universities. We've had over 20,000 online graduates since the year 2000 and are proud to hold a gold standard in teaching excellence framework. Upon successful completion of your course, you can become a part of a strong global alumni network. So if you are looking for a fully online program, you're in the right place. Next slide, please. The online master's programs offered by the university are designed to work around you as an online part-time postgraduate student. We have a strong student community and we try to ensure that our online students have a good level of engagement uh, with their peers and teaching staff. The course materials are designed for the online learning environment, also known as the DLE platform, which is where you would access all your uh, learning resources throughout your program. Our program are also much more than just a reading list. They are interactive and challenging, there is also a high level of support from academics and our student support team to ensure that students are successful in their studies. Next slide, please. So now I will pass over to Lisa, uh, who will discuss the online MD program. Hi, Sarah. Uh, welcome, everybody. Thank thanks for coming along, whether you're watching this live or on the recording. Uh, just to introduce myself a little bit before we get started. So uh, I'm Dr. Lisa Day, but uh, I wasn't a doctor always. Back in uh, 1999, I was a prospective student looking for my own MBA programme. Uh, I studied at an MBA. I loved it. It was, it was a fantastic experience. And I then went on, uh, stayed in, in business and management for a few more years, and then eventually moved into academia, maybe partly because I enjoyed my MBA experience so much. I did a master's in learning and teaching. And then eventually in 2017, so not really that long ago, I completed my PhD. Uh, I started the university in 2016. And uh, I was very fortunate in that uh, the programs, the MBA program, the online MBA in particular, has been running since 2001 but in 2021 we did a complete redesign so we redesigned all the modules they're all fresh they all rolled out between uh, 22 and 23 so the courses bang up to date uh, and having led the design and the implementation I can kind of safely say that I've seen every single piece of text in the whole MBA, MBA program. I've watched every video. I know every activity. So if you do have questions about the program, then please put them in the chat and uh, we'll hopefully we'll be able to answer them. So that's introducing me. Uh, the other thing I wanted to introduce is the management school as part of the University of Liverpool. Uh, we're very, very proud to be Triple Crown accredited. That's kind of the top management school accreditation by three big accrediting bodies, which is AACSB, Equis and AMBA, which is the Association of MBAs. 
Uh, and just to say, we, you know, we don't fill in a form and get these accreditations. They're a huge amount of work. Uh, we have to send off lots of material. We have people come in from America and all over the world. Uh, different institutions come and look at us. They interview students. They interview uh, all sorts of academics as well uh, before they're prepared to actually say, yes, you meet these standards. So it's a really rigorous quality process. So we're very proud of that. We're also really proud of our excellence in terms of research. We have some great research centers in the management school, one around entrepreneurship, one around sustainable business and outstanding links with business as well. So uh, let's say we're, we're very proud of, of the management school here. Thank you. Uh, can we go on to the next slide, please? OK, so so part of what I want to do today, if I think about kind of my purpose in talking to you, uh, it's really two things. So by the end of this session, if you only go away with two things, uh, the first is realistic expectations. So I really want you to go away from the session having a, an idea that, that an MBA involves quite a lot of work. It's quite a big commitment. So I wouldn't want you to come away thinking, thinking it didn't because it does. But the other thing is realistic expectations and excitement. So it is a big undertaking, but at the end of the day, as I've said with my own program, it was the best, it was the best two years of my life. I absolutely loved it. I loved the study. I loved working with other students. Uh, I've had moments on my own program where I laughed so much, my jaw ached. It, it can be a fabulous experience. Uh, and it was absolutely transformative in terms of my career, as it is for many people. So I don't want you to just have realistic expectations because if you don't have that excitement, you'll never have the commitment to go through the whole 30 months and finish the programme. On the other hand, if all you have is excitement and you don't have those realistic expectations, you're going to have a big shock because you're going to get on the programme and you're going to find it's quite demanding and quite hard work and we don't really want that. So we're trying to get that balance today uh, between that kind of realistic expectations and excitement. But starting with the excitement, the, it's one of the exciting things for us uh, as a management school was in 2023, we were ranked top 10 in the world by the Financial Times. So that was brilliant. Uh, it's also exciting for your own careers, because although we we're in the top 10, we were actually ranked first for overall career progression. So this is based on a survey of the alumni uh, and looking to in terms of their uh, uh, salary increases three years after they graduated, and they saw an average increase of 32% in their salary uh, three years after graduation, which to be honest to me is astonishing because uh, these aren't students who have just recently left university. They're probably already on reasonably good salaries before they start. So to see a 32% increase is just amazing. And obviously we can't promise you that, uh, but this is based on 2023 data and based on our alumni survey. Okay. Uh, if we can go on to the next slide. Thank you. So here we're talking, uh, we're talking about the experience, um, this idea that, that you have a minimum of three years experience uh, in order to uh, do an, an MBA. So I just want to go a little bit off script in terms of the slide. Uh, and what I want to talk about, and particularly, like say, if you're looking generally at an MBA programme, I really want to try and just make that distinction between what is an MBA and how that compares with, say, an MSc in management, uh, a Master's of Science, or an MA, a Master of Arts in, in management or something similar. Uh, and we, we're all within the UK and globally, there's, there's lots of standards that universities have to adhere to. For example, the Quality Assurance Agency. And there are different criteria for what an MBA needs to fulfill compared to any MSc or MA program. So it's just to make, make that distinction. It is a very different program and that's recognized in terms of, of quality standards uh, and guidelines around, around what should be in one. Uh, and, and I think a lovely example of how it's different, and you can Google this, it's online, it's a news story. So in March, 2021, as we were coming out of lockdown, the University of Oxford, uh, restarted their MBA program a month earlier than all other programs within their management school. Said is their management school. And the reason they were able to do that is because the government said you can restart if your program 
is highly practice based. So for most universities, they restarted their their medicine programs, their nursing programs, their art classes, things that were really practical. But the University of Oxford said, no, no, our MBA is really practical and therefore it meets the criteria. And they restarted and it got a lot of press because that was seen as, as quite controversial. But I completely understand why they did it, because with an MBA, you're not just getting knowledge, you're learning skills, things like time management, team working, decision making under pressure. You know, if you've read the if you've watched the movie Goodwill Hunting, you know, you can't get the education from an MBA from the library. It's more about what you do uh, than what you learn. So in terms of being highly practical, if you think about something like an on campus program, you might do things like, I don't know, building Lego or raft building. It's very physical. Uh, you spend a lot of time doing group work, a lot of time with each other. You have lunch together, you know, and if that really appeals to you, if you really want to be with people all the time, then something like the Liverpool on campus MBA might be the right thing for you. And I think with online, there's traditionally there's been this sort of image that it's something you do solo. So go back before online programs, you had correspondence courses. And they would send you the material through the post and you would literally work through it on your own. So if that's more your image, that you really want to do something solo or nearly solo, you don't really want to interact with people, then again, an MBA is probably not for you. Uh, the, something like our online MSc management still has some interaction, but not nearly as much as you get on the MBA. So it's important to understand that there is a lot of interaction, collaboration, and there's a reason for that because that's what an MBA is all about. So when we designed the online MBA, and as I said, we redesigned it completely in 2021, we're really looking for that sweet spot. We're trying to look for that balance where there's lots of individual assessments, there's lots of work and study that you do on your own, uh, but there's also lots of opportunities for collaboration and for teamwork. Uh, and that's why, going back to the slide, that's why we ask for at least three years experience, because it's not going to be helpful if you're probably doing Lego or if you're doing raft building. But that experience is invaluable when you're doing case studies or when you're doing a simulation or whether you're sharing your own experience. So, so typically students have about 11 years experience uh, and that's one of the benefits of the programme. Uh, it's also probably one of the reasons why the MBA programmes have so much prestige and, and, and often a salary bump because you do it, uh, you develop skills as well as knowledge. Uh, and people do an MBA for lots of reasons, but probably not just for sort of knowledge building or for interest. They do it for career progression, career change, or maybe to start their own business. And just going back to the sort of on-campus online, one of the advantages that we find with the online programme is you get wonderful global diversity because people are studying from all over the world. So uh, on the on-campus programme, I think last year we had nine different nationalities. And on the online program, we had 48 different nationalities. So that just gives you an idea of the sort of variety you get. So in terms of networking, you really are developing a global network uh, and, and you've got people all over the world from all sorts of industries and generally with, with very high caliber in terms of experience uh, and, and knowledge that they bring to the program. So that's what I want to say there. If we can move on to the next slide, please. So having kind of given you a sense of why you might want to do an MBA and, and how it differs from, from, from an MSc or an MA, uh, we're now going into the kind of this particular program. So this is the structure of the University of Liverpool online MBA program. And this is one of two slides. So this is the, the core modules. The program adds up to 180 credits. And this is the first 100 credits. And when we developed this, and again, reasonably recently, we had uh, employers who were involved in it. We had alumni who were involved in it. We had kind of students who were involved in it. We looked at the market to see what was needed, what would be needed going forward and developed the modules kind of based on those kind of insights. So 
it's all it's an MBA is often a very generalist degree so it's a broad range of management skills we try and cover all the kind of main areas of management and you see that in terms of you know personal development international business finance marketing human resources and as I was saying about the uh the program in terms of of, of content most of it is what we call asynchronous. So asynchronous is where you access the materials, uh, a bit like Facebook. So you read someone's post, maybe the day before, and then you comment. And the difference between asynchronous, we then have some live sessions, which are called synchronous sessions. And a live session is where you're like we are now. This is a synchronous session. We're all online at the same time. And for many years, Amber, the Association of MBAs, would not accredit wholly online MBA programs for the reasons I was alluding to that they're very practical programs. You need to engage, you need to interact. How can you do that if it's all entirely asynchronous? But obviously technology has changed. There's much more that you can do online now. And Amber do accredit uh, wholly online programs such as this one, uh, but there is a, an assist, insistence. There are at least 120 live hours throughout the program. So any AMBER accredited program, and I would, I would encourage you to look at AMBER accredited programs because they are very rigorous in terms of auditing and checking the standards. You will have uh, at least 120 live, live sessions. So when we were designing that, we were really trying to make sure that those sessions were really valuable. So they're spread throughout the program, but they're, 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 they're concentrated more in some modules than others. So, in the, in the core modules here, we start with things like developing as manager and leader and international business. And in those, there's typically three live sessions. So an hour in week one, in week three, and in week five. And this is six week, six week modules. So it's a chance to get to, to know people. It's a chance to maybe do an activity or talk about the assessments, that kind of thing that we use them for. And then towards the end, as you've built that knowledge and you really want to start practicing it, so those final three modules there, innovation and entrepreneurship, strategic management simulation, management practice, there we have more synchronous sessions, more interaction, because you're doing things. You're working together on the simulation. You're doing a project on innovation and entrepreneurship. Management practice is, is a fabulous module. We have uh, three what we call executive project weeks. And there every, every student who's currently eligible, everyone on, on the cohorts, come together and we have a live guest speaker, we work on a project over the week and then we present back to each other at the end of it. We, we have a recorded presentation that we present in case people can't make the session. Uh, but what it means is you might be on module one when you do your executive project week and somebody else might be on module 10, but you're all in there and you're all sharing experiences, which is how it is in the real world. So that's a great part of the programme. Right, thank you. I'm gonna move on to the next part. So I said we've got 180 credits. So the final 20 credits in terms of the 10 credit modules are the electives. Uh, the electives were designed very much in consultation with the students and the, alum and the alumni who've graduated and are uh, employee advisors. And in fact, I can, I can remember the person saying it now that, that they, they thought we should have two people-oriented uh, electives and two task-oriented electives. And that's what we did. So you choose two from the four. Uh, and if you like the very, the very tasky ones, then you're probably going to do data strategy and analytics for managers and project management. And if you're a bit more of a people-y person, then you're really going to enjoy global leadership or you're really going to enjoy corporate citizenship. But there's, there's, there's something to choose from. And they're all, at the moment, all kind of equally popular. And then you go on, you have a 60 credit MBA project, uh, and that is 36 weeks to complete. You start with research methods within that module and you do a research proposal uh, and then you allocate a supervisor. But it's it's less intensive than a traditional, say, a 15 to 20 credit diss dissertation which is heavily research oriented. So it's about 8,000 words and it's a project within your organization where you're using research to maybe solve a problem or look at a challenge. And as well as the eight to 10,000 words and the proposal, we also ask you to produce a recorded presentation 
uh, where you actually imagine that you're presenting the findings from your project to your company or whoever, whichever company that you've chosen to, to base it on. So that sense that it's really important that what you've done is applicable, that it does solve a problem and that you can actually have those skills to then persuade somebody to take that on board and make those changes because there's no point doing loads of research and analysis if you can't convince somebody uh, that what you've got is useful and they should they should implement it. So that's quite an important part of the program as well. And then finally here, career catalyst, zero credits. That sounds great, doesn't it? So, you, so you're not getting any credits and there's no assessments in that module, uh, but effectively the career catalyst runs throughout the program and it's where we have the kind of employability uh, materials, resources, CV writing support, uh, lots of things like that that we can then put in. If there's career talks, uh, they will be in there and we'll advertise them. If there's something going on campus, which we which is being recorded or live uh, that, that's online, we might, we might put notifications about that in there. So we also, you have a career development, a learning log, that runs throughout your program and that's stored within the career catalyst as well so although there's no assessment and it's not credit bearing it's still a really important part of the program as well okay if we can move on to the next slide please so i'm just going to talk about about what it looks like because i think i can see there's a there's a there's a photo there it's very hard to imagine what what an online uh, learning program looks like and, and even if you've done one they're, they're all quite different so as I said we, we we want it to be active particularly with the MBA but with all our programs a, a principle of online learning at Liverpool is that it's active learning that you learn with and from others and like I say we've been doing this since 2001 so we've really built this framework and this pedagogy as we call it in terms of learning and teaching over a long time so it's active and it's also research led so we think well why do it at Liverpool because we have an incredible reputation in terms of research and we bring that into the program so you'll see Liverpool case studies as well as international case studies you'll see academic papers that have been written by Liverpool faculty and we try and highlight those when we're using them just briefly so it's got so lots of words there but it should, it should be clear that, that some wholly online programs, uh, not, not typically MBAs for the reason I've said, you know, that they're into, you're working with other students. So it's not totally self-paced. You can't decide to do something one month and something the next. There are things that need to be done within a week. Now, when you do them in that, in, during that week, it's up to you, but you will have things to be done within a particular week. So, so typically your week starts on a Tuesday, and you might go through what we call a lecture cast, which is the equivalent of a sort of roughly one to two hour lecture on campus. But it's broken down into multimedia. So lots of short videos, lots of little exercise, lots of recaps. Uh, there's always transcripts if you want to, if you want to read through the materials. So people work through those. And that's really the kind of main knowledge of, 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 the, of the week. But then you'll do some kind of activity. So quite often it's what we call a collaborative discussion board. So having read it, you'll then do something where you're talking to the other students and engaging with them. And maybe you'll have a post on, say, a Friday and then on a Monday you'll follow up, read the other post, comment on what somebody else has put. So that's quite, quite typical. And like I say, you'll have a live session typically in week one and three and five where you talk to the other students. Uh, the lecturers have office hours. So if you want, if you've got a query, say, about the assessment, then you might want to talk to the, to the lecturer during the office hours or you might want to, to, to message the lecturer and they might get back to you. Typically, you can expect to study about 15 to 20 hours a week. Uh, and that's really the case for, you know, all part time master's programs in the UK would be that kind of study. And that includes everything that includes doing your assessments as well as going through the materials. And like I say, that's a sort of quality standard in terms of how much content and teaching there is in a master's programme, a part time one. So that's something to take into consideration. Uh, and, and, and this is really, I think, the, the when I talked about realistic expectations, this is where, you know, there is a lot, you know, there's a lot to do. It, it's it's a quite an intensive programme. And, and there's a reason that that people do get the salary bump because they have learned how to manage their time effectively, things like that. 
But in terms of excitement, I would say, you know, you get feedback almost every week from your lecturer. You have something saying that you're doing well or something that helping you to do better. So you might be having a bad week at work, but maybe you have an assessment that goes well. Uh, to start with, the, the assessments might be quite daunting, uh, but there's a real sense of progress because, uh, you know, you're getting through the, the modules, uh, you're ticking them off and, and, and say it, it can be very satisfying as well. So uh, so don't be too daunted by, by the prospect of assignments and assessments either. OK, if we can move on to the next slide. So assessment, always, always a big topic. So. Uh, Again, the context of the nature of an MBA, as you as we've seen now, it's very practice based. It's very uh, applied in terms of your own organization. We want you to be better managers, not just know more about what management is or leadership is. Uh, there's typically three assessed pieces of work per module, normally one that's due in week two, one in week four and a final one in week six. Not always, but something like that. So for example, you might have a collaborative discussion board that's assessed. So your post and your, your response to somebody else is assessed. And that could be in week two and week four. And each of those could be about 15% of the grade. And then in week six, you might have a final assignment that's 70% of the grade. And that might be around 2000 words, but it might well not be a written report. Some of them are, it could be a recorded presentation, it could be something we call a slide deck report. And we introduce these in module two as a group exercise. So we get to know them uh, and then we do it individually in a different module. And that's a, a cross between a presentation and a report in that it slides, but with words where uh, you can read it on your own if you want to. So the sort of thing that investor relations presentations do or uh, uh, I've seen marketing pitches done in this way. So it, it's it's what we call an authentic assessment. This is what we're looking for, things that you might actually be asked to do in the workplace. So within marketing, it's a marketing plan. So we try and make sure there's a good range. If you're doing very experiential model modules like the management in practice or the strategic simulation, then quite often the assignment is reflective. So we want you to reflect on your learning and come up with some, uh, some, some smart objectives, some things that you might do differently in future. But we, we have group work. We do have an exam. That's often a big question. We have one uh, currently. I, I say that because I, I, I don't think it's likely to change, but we have one online proctored exam. Uh, I, 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 it's not in my notes, but I should say we, we also use uh, we use what's called detection software to see if 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 your assignment has come from somewhere else. Uh, we also have generative AI detection. So, you know, you have to your your assessment has to be your own work. Uh, and say if you weren't planning that, then please, please look somewhere else. So just just to just to say that uh, it's a big topic at the moment. I think the other thing I wanted to say in terms of assessment is particularly if you're not uh, coming from the UK, then it's probably worth saying uh, that in terms of grading UK assessments, we often get this question because in the UK, a, a pass mark is 50 to 59%, and that's a, a good piece of work, a solid piece of work. 60 to 69 is a very good piece of work. If you average that across the whole programme, you'd come out with a merit, which is excellent. Anything above 70%, is outstanding. It's excellent. Uh, it's incredibly rare that you get above about 75%. I have seen one or two 80%. And informally, what that tends to mean is what you've done is pretty much better than the lecturer could have done themselves. They're, they're so impressed with it. So we sometimes get students from other countries where they're used to getting 90, 95%. Uh, it would only happen in a UK one if it was, say, something quantitative where it's either, you know, a multiple choice, it's either right or wrong. But typically, if you ever get 70% or above, you're doing outstandingly well uh, and you should be extremely proud. And the other thing is that I think it's important, again, just looking generally at MBA programmes, you know, they are time intensive. And I think there's never any perfect assessment. So if you're a perfectionist, try, try and understand that you will never submit the perfect assessments. You will only ever submit the best assessment you can in the time available. 
and sometimes that's a bit of satisficing, uh, but it gets you through the line. And that's that's what happens at work as well. You know, we never do the perfect piece of work at, at work. We always do what we can in the time available. So so that's an important message too. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm going to hand off very shortly, but just like say, hopefully, if you've got questions, pop them in the chat. If there's anything to say, you've got me here. Uh, I, I, I know the program extremely well. So if there's anything you're curious about, and hopefully just over this last uh, 20, 30 minutes, you've got a sense, I hope, of the difference between an MBA and an MA on MSc program. And maybe having, having had that information also online on campus, you've got a better idea of what might be right for you. Uh, you've hopefully got a better idea of our, our Liverpool online MBA program. Uh, and, and how that's structured. And again, whether that sounds exciting to you or whether that sounds right for you. And also you have some more realistic expectations in terms of what it might involve. Uh, and I hope some excitement, like I say, I wouldn't want you not to go away with that because uh, I, I, if my life depended on it, I don't think I could ever do my PhD again. I wouldn't particularly want to do my MA in learning and teaching again. But if someone gave me an opportunity to, to do my MBA over and over again, I, I would love it. You know, it, it's it's there's a reason that I ended up doing the job I'm doing eventually, because, you know, I do think it's an absolutely fantastic experience. So I, I hope you will do it, uh, do an MBA at some point in your future. OK, and with that, I'm going to hand over to Ruth, who's going to talk about the admissions process. Thanks, Lisa. That's hi. Yeah, my name is Ruth and I'm an admissions advisor for the University of Liverpool online programmes. And as Lisa said today, I'll just be speaking about the admissions process and the steps required from when you first make an inquiry to submitting the application and then going on to enrol onto a programme. So if I could just have the next slide, please. So once you're ready to submit an application, you can do this via our website just using the link on this slide and your application should include the following documents. So we'll need some form of photo ID, preferably a passport or driving license as long as it's within date and we'll need an up to date copy of your CV, your previous degree certificates and transcripts and those will need to be translated into English if necessary. Uh, we'll also need a personal statement of around 300 to 400. 500 words, um, just you know, outlining your previous experience, why you want to do the programme and where you're hoping to go with it afterwards. And then for international applicants, we will need some form of evidence of English language proficiency. So if you have an IELTS or TOEFL taken within the last two years, you can submit your results for that. And um, we can also consider some school certificates over a certain grade or if you don't have anything that you can provide that's absolutely fine because we have our own free university English test called KTE um, so once you've submitted an application we can set you up to complete that test instead but if you're not sure about any of the requirements just contact the admissions team and we can advise further on those and the next slide please so the admissions process usually begins when a student submits an inquiry about the program that they're interested in and once you've submitted the inquiry, you'll be assigned a dedicated admissions advisor who will answer your queries about the programme and just make sure you're happy with everything or if you have any questions at all before you submit the application. And that will be your admissions advisor throughout the whole process, um, all the way up until enrolment. So you'll be dealing with the same person the whole time. It is completely free to apply and you can apply through the application form on our website. And then once you've submitted your application and all of the documents have been received, this will be reviewed by the admissions team who will then let you know if there's anything else required. And then we'll submit that for formal review with the director of study who will usually reply within 10 working days just to let us know of the outcome. Once we've received the outcome, your admissions advisor will let you know if it is successful and they'll obviously advise you of the good news um, and you'll be sent an offer letter. And once you've received that, you would need to accept the offer and make a deposit or full payment within 14 days just to confirm your place and be enrolled onto the programme. If I could have the next slide, please. So the programme, the online MBA programme is part time um, and it lasts for 30 months. And it is a full 180 credit program. And I can see on the chat that some of you have asked if the program is fully funded. Um, so the program isn't and there would be fees payable. So the total cost is £22,050. But we do have scholarships available. So if we could just go to the next start slide, I'll let you know 
the scholarships available. So for this programme, we currently have a 15% executive scholarship available, and that's available for the remaining intakes of this academic year. Um, so that would apply to our next start dates on the 16th of April and the 9th of July. And you can pay for the programme in monthly instalments, but if you'd prefer to pay the full fee up front, then you would get a 5% discount on top of that as well. Um, so that's just if the, the full fee is paid up front. And then University of Liverpool alumni can also receive a 10% alumni discount. Um, but unfortunately, this can't be combined with the executive scholarship. So the executive scholarship can be combined with the upfront discount um, and, and those two would be applied together. And then if I could just have the next slide, please. If you do have any questions at all about the admissions process or the programme, you can visit the link on this slide here and you can contact the admissions team either by live chat, live chat, um, sorry, WhatsApp. Um, we do also have a form you can fill in to submit an inquiry or you can give us a call. And if you're ready to apply, you can also um, click on the link on this slide here as well. I think that's everything I needed to cover about the admissions process. But if you do have any questions at all about it, feel free to pop those in the chat as well. Okay, great. Thank you, uh, Rich, and thank you, Lisa. That was very informative. Uh, we hope that this has given you all a great insight into the online MBA program, and all, as well as the admissions and enrollment process here at the University of Liverpool. Um, so now we will move on to the Q&A section. So please do feel free to send them in. And the first question we have is someone someone's asked, is there a possibility to try out a module to see how it works before signing up for the for the full course? I, I, I'll, I'll, I'll take that. I, I don't I, I don't believe so from, from, from an admissions perspective. Uh, but what I can say is that there is there is an induction module. So every student has a two week induction, which takes you through all the uh, sort of academic side. Uh, if, if you haven't studied for a long time, it's there as well. Uh, I, I don't know uh, financially what happens if, if you got through that and, and didn't decide to go forward. Uh, that, that's, that's probably more admissions, but, but obviously there is that opportunity to do the induction module. Also important with the induction module is you actually have an opportunity to submit a piece of work and get some feedback. So often it's more a matter of confidence. And I think people get a lot of confidence from doing that piece of work and getting some positive feedback as well. Yeah. Just to add to yeah. that, sorry, as you mentioned with the induction, um, experience we do have a 21 day money back guarantee so once you've started the program you'd have the induction period and then also one week of the program before you could decide if you wanted to cancel um you know if, if it wasn't for you um so that is a possibility as well you would get a full refund on the amount that you paid before that time okay great thank you both so much for answering that and um, the next question we have is can we do all electives oh i love i love the enthusiasm of that uh, uh at the moment, you you can we and we we only, we have the four so that they're all available. So at the moment, it's it's just the two out of four. But we are looking at making modules available, and you can imagine how going forward uh, that would be great for people doing CPD, continuous professional development. So we're hoping going forward that that lots of the modules might be available even for students who graduated. Uh, but at, at the moment, no, it's just the two out of four. Okay, great, thank you. Um, next question we have, um, are you able to transfer credits from a different MBA? Ruth? <laughs> yeah, we do have a, a recognition of prior learning procedure um, where we can take into consideration some credits and review that and see if it's possible to transfer those. Um, they usually would need to have been achieved within the last three years. Um, and you'd also need to have taken them from a degree that hasn't been completed. Um, so we'd, if you, you have any questions about it, just let the admissions team know. And we'd ask you to submit a normal application for the programme and then your previous transcripts and learning outcomes from the previous programme. And then we can assess those and see if it's possible to transfer credits to this programme. Great, thank you. Um, so another question is, someone asked, some other online programmes uh, include on-campus orientation weeks and, and on campus modules. Uh, does the Liverpool online program incorporate any of these elements? Well, that's a, that's a great question. I mean, I know on some programs, those elements are mandatory 
And we, we took the decision not to go down that route because we know for a lot of people who study online, we, we have people on oil platforms, we have people all over the globe uh, where it would be extremely difficult for them to come. Uh, so, so we don't have a mandatory uh, on-campus orientation. Uh, in the past, we have run optional residentials uh, on campus and we, we don't do that at the moment, but we are looking at doing that, uh, I hope in the relatively near, near future. So I think it would always be optional because of the nature of the program uh, and, and the need to, to, to fit around people's very, very busy lives and, and their other commitments. So uh, not at the moment, uh, but hopefully in the future. And so typically when people meet on campus for the first time, it's, it's graduation and the graduation ceremony. Okay, I hope that answers the question. Great, thank you. Um, so the next question we have, uh, someone said, I have 10 years uh, work experience, uh, but I don't have three years of managerial experience and I would like to undertake the MBA to support career progression. Whilst I have managed some projects, I wasn't sure if this was sufficient for an application. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Ruth, Ruth can ask this as well. So, but generally, uh, if 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 it's in any way sort of borderline in terms of experience, it will often come to me as the director of studies for the program to review. So I would say the best thing there is to fill out your CV in as much detail as possible to highlight any project work you've done, any teams you've managed, any leadership role, uh, any budget management, people management. Just try and highlight that because often you know that we we do get uh, people from very specialist areas. We get teachers. Well, you know, they've been managing a classroom of 30 children. I, they have my utmost respect. So in the context of what you're managing, if you try and put that across on your CV, you know, sometimes we get a CV and it just says that, you know, it's just got the job title and very little else. Uh, but, the, but the more information you give us, the more we can consider and look for where we would consider that managerial. It, it's not about having a management manager in your job title or anything like that. And just to add to that as well, your personal statement is a great opportunity to support your application. So I'd recommend as well, you know, providing as much information as possible in there um, and sort of highlighting any experience you think we'd find relevant. Yeah. Is it worth, I think it's also perhaps, we've seen you just mentioned the personal statement. When you write the personal statement, my advice would be to make it as specific to the programme as you can. Uh, you know, try and explain why it's this programme that you're interested in and not any other uh, we've all seen generative AI type things where it's uh, it's very generic and it's very high level. And it, to be honest, it stands out a mile at the moment. So I would be specific to the program and to, and to your own experiences. Yeah. Great, thank you both. Um, so the next one we have is, so someone said, I noticed that you have a partnership with Capstone for your online MBA program. What role does this company play in the course delivery and does Kaplan appear on the certificate? Okay. Well, the first thing is no, Kaplan doesn't appear on the certificate. <laughs> uh, and, and actually online doesn't appear on the certificate either uh, because it's the same certificate. Uh, it looks exactly the same as the on-campus. You graduate with the on-campus students. The programmes are not identical. They're separate programmes, but they're very similar. And we talk all the time and try and make them more similar, but there are reasons uh, uh, our global students have some different demands in terms of what they want and how we assess them. Uh, but it, 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 you, you I say when I walk into a room at graduation, I, I, I don't know an online MBA student from a from an on campus. But I do know they've got an MBA because, as I said, the MBA is different. The MA and MSc and actually has a different his yellow uh, robes. So it's a slightly different robe. Uh, Kaplan. Yes, we have we, uh, we, we have a partnership with Kaplan since 2018. They are absolutely brilliant in terms of enabling us to provide a global offering and providing, uh, you know, global student support, IT support. Uh, they manage the platform. They, they manage recruitment. But all the academic material is developed by University of Liverpool lecturers. Uh, so, like I say, our research that we use, it, it's, it's all in there. And in terms of the actual, so you have the material, but you also have a lecturer within your actual classroom. So, uh, you know, the person who marks your work and who gives you feedback and who runs the, the synchronous sessions. And they're a sort of mix in that they're recruited by Kaplan 
but they're all approved by Liverpool, well, by me. So I go through the CVs. And because we are AACSB accredited, they have to have similar qualifications that we'd have uh, on campus. They come under IA AACSB accreditation. So typically they'll have a PhD uh, or they'll have a lot of practitioner experience. But I look at those CVs to make sure uh, that they're of a similar standard. And then they are honorary uh, Liverpool faculty in the same way you might have adjunct faculty in an on-campus programme. So I, I hope that answers the question. Yeah, that was great. Thank you, Peter. Um, so next question is um, what about admissions. So is there an, an, any interview uh, for the admissions process? No, so there won't be any interviews for the admissions process. It's all based on the application you submit and the supporting documents. Um, sometimes one of the admissions team will contact you just for clarification on anything if we're not sure about um, or for further information, but there wouldn't be any interview at any point. It's all based on the application you submit with us. Great, thank you. Um, and the next question we have is, are there any breaks between the modules or do they run continuously one after? OK, so, so so there are some, but but uh, not as many as, as if you did the MSc programmes. So typically we'd have two modules back to back, so 12 weeks and then maybe a one week break. So you will get a calendar for the year. So it is quite intensive. Uh, and part of the reason is that we want you to complete within 30 months. So uh, we've had people say, could we have a, a break after every six weeks? Well, we can't because we can't get you through in 30 months if we do that. So, yeah, sometimes you might run back to back. You might even have an executive project week. But we'd almost certainly then have, have a week's break. Uh, and then seasonally, we break for typically about two weeks uh, over the Christmas New Year period. Uh, yeah. OK. Oh, great. Uh, if someone is not able to attend the synchronous sessions. Quite quiet there, Sarah. I don't know if you can get a little closer, but I got it. I got it. Ha what happens if you can't attend the synchronous sessions? So, so like I say, the synchronous sessions are uh, in part, a part of the AMBER requirement, as I said. So uh, AMBER say that they are mandatory 120 hours, but it's mandatory in the same way that attending an, an on-campus lecture is mandatory. So you don't necessarily get to every single one, but I always say you do so by your best endeavors. So you try to. If you can't get to one, then let your lecturer know. If you missed all three in a module, then your lecturer will probably get in touch with you uh, or you get some feedback or student support might get in touch with you. But generally, by your best endeavors, uh, you try and come to the synchronous sessions. And, 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 and you know, and of course, in terms of equipment, you, you you need a laptop or a, or, or, a, or a workstation, but you'll also need a web camera with with a working microphone. Uh, so so that's just just something to bear in mind as well. So I hope that answers the question. Like I say, it's not you know you're not going to get in terrible trouble. It's just it's an agreement that you get there by your best endeavours. And also with the synchronous sessions, uh, we, we within a module we we try and usually run those twice. So the same session run one twice for different time zones. And when we do group work, you can, if, so the executive project weeks, you can, we usually give an, uh, say, what time zone would you like your group to be in? So we get, when we put people into groups or when they allocate themselves to groups, we give them an opportunity to make sure that the people in the group are in the same time zone. So you might be arranging to meet together, but you're not having massive time zone issues where you, you're never awake at the same time. So I hope that answers the question. Great, thank you. I hope you can uh, hear me better now. Um, the next question is, uh, is everyone entitled to the executive scholarship of 15% if applied with, for within required time? Yeah, so that executive scholarship is available for any applicant to the online MBA programme for the 2023-24 academic year. Um, so like I said, that'll be our April and July intake. And following that, we the fees are reviewed in line with each new academic year which begins in August um, so at that point we would then confirm any new scholarships that were available for the next academic year and at any point we would always apply the highest scholarship available to you so it's not something that you have to apply for separately any eligible scholarships would automatically be applied to your application. Great thank you. Uh, thank you for answering that. Um, the next question um, we have is what are the technical needs of the course? 
I think I've covered that in terms of, let's say, the laptop, the workstation, the, the web camera and the microphone. I can see a question that says, which module would you say is where Liverpool stands out compared to other universities? Should, should, we, take, should we take that one? Yeah, yeah. Is that OK? So just so. So it's a great question. And I, I would say if I own if I only had to do one module, uh, the module I think we're most proud of is probably uh, management in practice uh, and the executive project weeks. And I say everything I, I've said is kind of leads towards that in that that is the closest thing we have to the on campus raft building or Lego. That's the closest thing we have where, where we're online, but you're really doing experiential exercises you're collaborating you're not just discussing so we have you know bring, we have some amazing uh, live guest speakers who come in we've had people talking about climate change uh massive fa project failures uh it gives enough contemporary technology it gives enough opportunity to bring in uh contemporary topics and the fact that you get to meet with students on all stages of the mba uh, I think makes it really good. But th there's just a couple of other things I'd pick out in terms of things that stand out in the programmes. And I think just these are things having, I do some review work where I see other online MBA programmes. So these are like questions to ask if you're looking at other online MBA programmes and comparing. Definitely ask about the library because we've got a lot of experience over 20 years. And as a result of that, we've built the online library. So the library that you're able to access as an online student, if the university hasn't been doing online for very long, it may not be as robust in terms of study skills that are all available online. Uh, I've even seen universities where you don't have access to their, to, their, to their online library. So ask about the library resources for online students. Make sure it's up to date. So when was the program last fully updated? say ours we have new modules going out in 2022 2023 make sure there's an induction program let's say we've got two weeks so ask there's an induction module make sure there's really good student support we have excellent student support and it support you've got people you can talk to if you've got a problem with you know with your home life not just your academic life you've got your faculty you can talk to about academic things but you've got people you can just talk to because you're feeling a bit a bit stressed uh, or, or you need some help uh, ask about accreditation i say amber aacsb equus Am amber means you're going to get a certain standard in terms of live sessions and interaction which is so important on an mba and then ask about scale because like i say if you've been doing it for 20 years and you're doing it with lots of students and this is across the university with 22 online programs you have the infrastructure a lot of universities it's kind of bolted onto the side you don't have the infrastructure for online students who are part time that you have for full time on campus. OK, thank you. Yeah, that was great. Thank you. Lisa. Um, so I think I believe we have some time for a few more questions. Uh, so the next one we have is someone's asked, do I need to take an English test even as a managerial position like general manager and country manager for 10 years with proven track records with customers and employers' testimonials to support my application. Um, so unfortunately, we're not able to accept work experience as evidence of English language proficiency. And that's just because we evaluate all applications according to the same entry criteria just to ensure there's no bias. Um, so you would need to either complete our online free test or one of the other options available that I discussed. Um, but if you're not sure what you can provide, please do get in touch with the admissions team and we can you know, outline the options again for you. Great, thank you. Um, so the next question we have, someone's asked, uh, so the marketing module is called Digital Strategic Marketing. Uh, why is it specifically focusing on digital and how would that differ from a usual marketing module? Great, great question. It, it doesn't. It covers all the basics of marketing, but we really wanted to signpost that we were covering the digital as well because that's you know some argue that all marketing is digital marketing these days but we wanted to make sure that we 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 sent that message that we were covering you know search engine optimization and data ethics and and some of the more digital areas and a textbook is a digital marketing textbook but it still covers seven p's uh you know five forces the assess the main assessment is a is a digital marketing plan but it covers all the main elements of a traditional marketing plan uh, so uh, I hope that I hope that covers that one. Perfect. Thank you, Lisa. 
And uh, next question we have is, are students expected to buy hard copy textbooks? No, no. I, I mean, providing providing you're comfortable with reading a textbook online, we have, re we have a reading list. Uh, each module tends to have one core textbook, uh, which you have automatic access to, and then a reading list. So a lot of what you read are academic journal articles or chapters in books, but that you just link from the library straight through into those resources. You wouldn't you wouldn't be expected to buy a hard copy. Perfect, thank you. Um, so I think our last question is, um, can you give a bit more information about alumni network and community for students? Yeah, uh, so, so everybody who, who finishes the program uh, is entitled to join the alumni program uh, the alumni network is is the same for all students so the on-campus Liverpool students uh, join the same alumni network there are uh, webinar type events there are on-campus events we sometimes have students who live within an hour's drive of the university who might want to come to those alumni on-campus events uh, say the there's a there's a LinkedIn group is reasonably is reasonably new and active. I think we opened it and had 400 members. We normally find that the online students are some of the most active in our alumni uh, groups. Uh, we have we have had sessions where people can come back to campus. I think there's have been some in other countries, but but I, not many. And I don't want, I don't want to commit to that. But I think there are there are some events where, where we'll have that host that in, in a different country. Uh, but that's generally like say for, for, for Liverpool alumni, uh, not just online. So uh, yeah, I think it's quite active, quite a lot going on and, and very and, and very big at this point. <laughs> Great, thank you, uh, Lisa. Um, and thank you to everyone for listening. I think that's all the questions we have time for today. Uh, if you do have any more, don't hesitate to get in touch with us by visiting our website. Again, just to say, we will email the webinar recording to you all, so do keep an eye out for that. And again, just thank you to our speakers and thank you to everyone for joining us. Uh, we wish you a great day. Uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs>